Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. So, here's the plan. Because YouTube cut my subscribers way down, I decide that I'm going to release the entire video series as soon as possible, which is right now. First off, it's going to give you guys a lot of information if you haven't done your Christmas shopping yet. Before, instead of releasing it on December 14th, which might be too late to shop online for Christmas, you guys will have plenty of time now. I decided to fight the negativity with the positivity. Um, also, I had a video that was planned. I'm being released December 7th. I'm going to move that to December 14th. Then I'm not going to upload anything besides possibly gameplay videos until after uh, New Year. That way, when I come back, I've got plenty of content still going. And this is like a five video long series. In my schedule, that's 10 weeks of content that I'm uploading in a single day. So I hope you guys enjoyed. See you soon. Bye. What's up guys? So my channel's been growing a lot recently and I thought I might give back to the community by essentially uploading my brain to the internet. In all seriousness, today I'm releasing a five-part video series that essentially explains all of my airsoft knowledge or most of my airsoft knowledge to date. The point of this video series is to give people who might want to start the hobby all the information that I wish I knew before I bought my first gun and gear. And for those more intermediate and advanced players, maybe you'll learn something along the way too. Maybe I'll explain a concept that I know more or I know better than you know. If before this first video you had never heard of airsoft by the end of the fifth one you should be able to explain it to your mom over christmas dinner of course i need to start with a disclaimer everything that i'm teaching in these videos is a result of the culmination of all my experiences since i've been playing airsoft since i was about 13 or 14 years old i'm by no means an expert all the ideas and claims in these videos come from my own personal experiences so if you guys have some critiques and comments i invite you respectfully to debate in the comments i know everyone won't agree with what i have to say 100 percent of the time so again i invite you to debate in the comments Section respectfully. As I explained previously, these videos will be in five parts. The first part, this one, is just going to be a bare bones explanation of Aerosoft. Everything you need to know from what is it to how it's played, all that, all that good stuff. A lot of you guys might want to skip this if you're not a complete beginner. Uh, the second video is going to be all about guns, all my knowledge about guns, what powers them, how they work, the different types of guns, the different styles, and there will be a handy little guide at the end which will help you buy your first gun. The third video is going to be about the essentials of airsoft, that's batteries, BBs, gas, simple stuff. In the fourth video will be going over tactical gear, that's all the attachments you can put on your guns as well as all the things you can wear and put on your body and their most useful aspects as well as the most aesthetic reasons. In the fifth video, we'll be going over basic maintenance and the internals of the airsoft gun. The internals of the AEG actually, I don't know much about uh, the other types. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching, let's get right into it. So, you recently discovered Airsoft. Maybe a friend told you about it, maybe you're a parent looking for a gift for your child, or maybe you saw a cool or not so cool video on YouTube. Either way, all of you ended up here and you're wondering, what the heck is it? In the simplest terms, Airsoft is a sport that involves players shooting each other with replica firearms. You've probably heard of paintball. Airsoft is similar to paintball because both sports require people shooting at each other, but other than that, they're both quite different. First, airsoft is not messy. Unlike paintball, airsoft guns fire six millimeter plastic BBs. They don't contain any paint, chalk, or marking substance of any kind. Because of this, airsoft is an honor-based sport. If you feel yourself get hit, you must raise your hand and yell hit because there's no way, there's no other way to verify a kill. Besides that, paintball markers are built to look like paintball markers. They don't look like actual firearms for the most part. On the other hand, airsoft prides itself on its realism and they build very realistic looking replicas. This is my personal G36C. If I brought this outside in public, it looks exactly like a real firearm, I would probably get shot. In most countries, or in many countries at least, airsoft replicas need to have some sort of mark on them to show that they are not a real gun. In the United States, airsoft guns must be shipped with a blaze orange tip, but the tip can be removed legally. If you remove the orange tip and you don't plan on shipping the gun, that's 100% okay. But when you buy a gun online, it will come with a uh, blaze orange tip. So the next question, is airsoft dangerous? I wouldn't call airsoft an extreme sport, but protection is a must. First off, you need eye protection. Full seal goggles or a full face mask is what's recommended. Personally, I use goggles and I also use a lower face mask to protect my teeth. Other areas you might want to try and protect are obviously the mouth, the ears, and maybe the forehead. Beyond that, airsoft is a sport that can require running, sliding, rolling, and even climbing. So all those present the same dangers that they might present if you weren't playing the sport. Uh, finally, 
being shot can cause very temporary harm. When you get shot with an airsoft BB, first off, it hurts less than paintball. That's just a fact because while paintball pellets are moving slower, they are much, much heavier than an airsoft BB and can leave large welts and bruises. Airsoft BBs are moving faster than paintballs, but when they hit, it's like a small pinch or a sting. Uh, if it hits unprotected skin, it can leave welts, bruises, and it can even break the skin. Um, the most dangerous wound I've ever seen while playing airsoft is small cuts and bruises. You can avoid some of these cuts and bruises with proper protection, long sleeves, gloves, and proper headgear. Personally, I don't mind it too much because I play with a short sleeve shirt and I've gotten some cuts that bleed, but nothing too serious. Beyond that, most matches are played at events and fields that have the proper health ravers, the proper authorities, staff, and referees that make sure everybody's playing safely. Even the referees want to make sure everyone's playing safely because they care about their customers and they will not hesitate to ban unsafe players like that. So back to the sport. The airsoft community evolves constantly and is heavily influenced by reality, video games, and pop culture. When a new weapon is popularized by the newest Call of Duty or the newest shooting game, it doesn't take long for an airsoft replica to pop up. Beyond that, many real firearms companies actually license their own airsoft guns. It's possible to buy a Glock that's been licensed by Glock or to buy an MP5 that's been licensed by HK. Furthermore, you can even find guns such as the assault rifle from Halo or the assault rifle from the Alien movies. Keep in mind, there's many different ways to enjoy the sport. Some people like to buy the most basic stripped down pieces of gear just to go out and play as often and as fast as possible. Other people never go out and play at all. We call them chair softers, where they just buy the most unique pieces of equipment or build the most unique pieces of equipment to build really cool kits and weapons that they like. Um, there's a collecting aspect of it, obviously. Simply, there is no right way to be an airsofter. When it comes to players and play style, there's a pretty universal accepted spectrum. On one extreme, we have speed softers. This comes from the paintball term speedball. Speed softers play the game essentially like paintball. They use really tricked out guns, they run as fast as possible, they spend a lot of money looking cool, and they even wear paintball masks. On the other hand, on the other extreme, we have extreme milsim players or military simulation players. They also spend a lot of money looking cool, but instead they try and c complete an impression. Um, in fact, you can take a milsim player and set him next to a full kitted out United States Marine, and the Milsim player is going to look better because they're not actually in combat. They use their gear, what, once a month or however often they go out to play while the Marine is actually working. Um, either of these sides spend a lot of money because <laughs> uh, airsoft is an expensive sport, but most people find themselves somewhere in between. I find myself about here on the spectrum because I prefer more realistic equipment and gear, but I move pretty fast. Lastly, airsoft is an expensive sport, but it doesn't have to be very expensive. I pride myself on knowing how to buy cheap and reliable gear versus buying the actual you know military equipment that's just unnecessary to enjoy the sport still we're talking about hundreds of dollars i'd say to get into the sport you should save up about 300 dollars to get everything you need to go out and play actually i made a whole cart between evic and amazon it came out to about 300 dollars and it included a gun battery full protection bbs a uh, plate carrier, three extra magazines, and some other attachments. A lot of these things are completely unnecessary to just get started. So you can do it for less than 300, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in future videos. So that's it for the introduction. In the next video, it's all about guns. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.